I hate them. I hate, hate, hate them. Alexis Sunshine 83, it's always sunny here. Hey Sunshiners, Alexis Sunshine 83 right here. So today we are talking all about 2024 fashion trends. Can we all just take a moment and like really let it set in that 2023 is gonna be over in a couple days? Like how did this happen? I have compiled a list of different fashion trends for 2024 and there's a mix of these trends coming from different, you know, fashion websites like Vogue and Nylon, some other ones that other fashion creators have talked about as like a predicted fashion trends for 2024 and also just trends or styles that I'm really excited to wear in 2024 and some pieces that are on my own thrift wish list. And I just decided to put it all in one video with also trends that I don't necessarily really love. So it's just 2024 fashion trends that I like and don't like. And I want to include the ones I don't like as almost like an anti haul, or I guess an anti trend of, of that trend to remind myself as I am going through the year 2024, that if I did not like that specific trend, but now everyone's wearing it and I'm getting influence to just, you know, take, take a little pause. As always, of course, wear whatever makes you happy, whether it is a trend or not. I like to look at fashion trends as more inspiration. And in most cases, if I do like a fashion trend, I try to find it secondhand and not kind of do a carbon copy. And if you've seen any of my trend related videos, then you know the spiel, but it's always important to mention. So yeah, let's get into it. Some of these trends have started to pop up in 2023 three, but I would argue more at the end of this year. So I feel like they really haven't had their moment and I feel like they will have their moment in 2024. And this first one perfectly, I think, is that which are the chunky like charm necklaces. I definitely saw people talking about charm necklaces back during the summertime, but in the past month, I've seen so many more people talk about it, showing different small businesses that help you create your own unique charm necklace. And I am all about this. I have seen some people say that it does give the whole like statement necklaces of the 2010s. And I definitely get that, but I will say with it being a lot of times like actual metal, it has a unique and almost vintage flair that doesn't make it seem as like fast fashion 2010s, especially if you are getting it from like a small business that does charm necklaces. There's just so much creativity and customization with these types of necklaces. There's a place in LA that Carrie and I had talked about going to, and I think we will next year, which is why I'm like, this will be a 2024 trend because I will probably get into it in 2024. <laughs> this is another trend where I saw some people talking about it this year, but I don't think it was necessarily mainstream, but as we go into spring and summertime, to me, it just makes sense that it's gonna become like a bigger trend, which are capris. And I'm saying that because the jor, especially the really long ones, like those were basically just bad baggy capris, at least some of them that I saw. Because we already kind of had seen that, I think it's now gonna go into, you know, to have something different as like a spring summer trend. I see capris making a big comeback. Obviously they a lot of times are a little bit more fitted, but there's some flare ones that I have also seen that are actually pretty cute. I did try some capris, I think in a video where it was like me trying trends I hate or something like that. And it wasn't that I didn't like the capri. It was mainly the fact that it was low rise that was kind of throwing me off. I wouldn't say, I'm gonna go out of my way to find some capris. And I'm kind of giving myself a rule with this one where I would only buy a capri if I'm able to properly try it on. Even if I'm at the thrift store and I like try it on on top of like bike shorts or something and I kind of feel like, okay, these are the fit and everything that I want, then cool. But just taking a measuring tape and like looking at the measurements and not being able to fully try it on, I am telling myself to not buy them because it is such a risk for adding into my wardrobe because it isn't something I've worn like regularly since I was probably 10 years old. So 
I feel like if I would give it a try, I would want to properly give it a try and make sure that whatever I am thrifting does actually like fit me. And so I don't have, you know, buyer's remorse and a thrift regret. It's not something again, that I think I'm gonna be looking for necessarily. It's just kind of like, if I found some capris, I tried them on and I like them, but they definitely are not on my thrift wish list or anything. <laughs> but what is on my thrift wish list is cheetah print, or I guess like leopard print. Honestly, I always forget which one is which, so please don't be mad at me. I really, really, really want to thrift some leopard print pants. Like, I just have pinned so many outfits with leopard print pants. I feel like I definitely have to get it right. I, I find a lot of them are like a skinny jean or like a legging and I want like actual jeans and maybe a looser fit. I was going back and forth with this trend if it was something that maybe if I just tried it, I would like, and I really, I really don't think so. And that are the really small glasses. I saw an article on Nylon that was like, geek chic is back and like the small little glasses. And I think on other people, it looks so cute. But for me, I'm just not a small glasses person, even like sunglasses. I don't know if it's because the hills like raised me as a child and so like the big bug glasses are just like ingrained in me even though we're talking obviously about clear glasses i think the big bug sunglasses naturally have moved into my preference when it comes to the size of normal glasses which then perfect to talk about this next one which are the big square almost like 70s glasses I love this so much. Another one that I definitely feel like I have kind of mentioned in the past couple of months, I think, but it wasn't until recently that I had to get new glasses and I decided to get these like big old square ones that now I'm like, yep, that's my glass. Uh, that's my glasses style. I love them so much. They're obnoxious and they just add so much personality to any outfit and they help me see which is great i don't know there's just something about a small frame that seems very limiting where like i can see the rim of it whereas the really big ones it's almost like i'm not wearing glasses a trend that i think that we're gonna see a lot next year is screen printed art on like lingerie and i mean again we've already been kind of seeing that but i definitely see it becoming bigger in 2024 and on just different types of clothing because obviously screen printing on like a t-shirt and that kind of thing but on skirts dresses and a very specific type of art style as well also a lot of the screen printing art is on lingerie so even more so I love slip skirts, slip dresses. So it just makes sense to be able to take something that I already wear all the time, but it has this like cute little detail addition. I feel bad for saying that I don't like this one because again, I think it I think it looks great on other people and it's just funky type of piece that I appreciate it, but the like boxing lace up sneakers, I'll show you examples because I feel like I can't really explain it. I hate them. I hate, hate, hate them. I also really hate like super knee high, like lace up Converse when those were really, really big. I don't know what it is because I love kind of like a, a boot, a long boot, and even like a lace up long boot. I don't mind, but there's something with like the construction of these that I just really personally do not like on me. I have really appreciated the vintage secondhand ones that I've seen other people style, but especially like the Jeffrey Campbell ones. I just feel like these are definitely going to become even bigger in 2024. Kind of similar to the charm necklaces, the clock necklaces. And maybe, maybe they're the same thing, but I'm putting them as something separate because I love them both and I want to talk about both. So clock necklaces, I don't know how it unlocked something for me, but I started seeing some clock chokers on my Pinterest and I started pinning them and I started falling in love with them. And then I found this Etsy shop from the UK that sells them and I absolutely fell in love. And then when I was doing Kathleen's 
thrift mystery box. She had a couple clock necklaces also pinned. And so I was like, wait, this isn't just me like all of a sudden falling in love with these. It seems other people are also falling in love with these. And I really want to buy like a gold clock choker. I did get one from that Etsy shop that you will eventually see that I'm really, really excited about. And it's just funky, it's just cool. Technically this next one is a hair trend and not a fashion trend, but I would say hair is an accessory to your outfit and the baby bane. I think is going to like blow up for 2024. Everyone has obviously um, different opinions on like types of bangs. And I feel like the baby bang is very, not controversial, but again, you either love it or you absolutely hate it. And I love the baby bang. I feel like people that have baby bangs instantly, I'm like, you're cool. There's an array of different types of baby bangs. You have the wispy baby bang, you have the straight across baby bang, you have, basically kind of just looks like a normal bane, but it is still slightly shorter than the normal bane. I've loved the curtain bane and I had gotten, I guess, more curtain banes back in October and they just grow out so much. And they're a perfect way to like go into banes. Whereas the baby bane is a little bit more um, commitment, but I definitely, I don't think I could do a baby bane. I'm not saying that I'm gonna get a baby bane. I wish I could do a baby bane, but I don't think my forehead is like big enough for a baby bane or maybe it's perfect because it's not that big that it would be good for the baby bane. I don't know. <laughs> On a lot of the different fashion websites, there was talk of like sculpted volume and specifically around like the hips having some sort of volume. And I also kind of thought of the bubble hem and I feel like that's kind of like part of that trend that we are gonna see in 2024. The bubble hem, um, here's the thing. Love it on other people, I don't think I can do it. Mainly because when I had tried the bloomer shorts, I don't know what it did to me, but when I put those on and where the volume was on the shorts, specifically in regards to my body, it just like looked very odd on me, at least personally. It was just too much emphasis on my thighs and like not that that's a bad thing and I don't really like dress myself according to my body type and if you do like that's totally fine but if you don't that's also totally fine and I don't know if it's just because of my body type though that I just didn't like that amount of volume specifically in one area of my body but it just, I like, I felt very, very uncomfortable. And I think the bubble hem, the way I've seen it, especially as shorts, to me, I just feel like I would absolutely hate it. So this is one where I'm saying, do not buy this Alexa. I thought this one was kind of an interesting fashion trend for 2024, which is heels slash sandals with socks. And I feel like my first instinct is to kind of be like, I kind of like that, especially heels and sandals where it shows like your toes. I just don't like my feet. I don't like showing my toes. Having it be like socially acceptable to wear a sock with it. I mean, I can do that now, but like as I guess like a trend um, without feeling weird that I'm wearing socks with like heels that should be showing my toes. I'm kind of on board with it, but then also I just feel like I wouldn't wear the heels, you know? Like I actively don't buy heels that show my toes. So like I would probably never even participate in this trend, but I appreciate it as becoming a trend. I don't know, I'm really not sure with this one. And when I think of the sandals that I do own, I wouldn't wear them with socks. Like the sandals that I own, I'm comfortable with then showing my toes, but I also don't wear them in a fashionable way. I wear them in like, well, except for my like Doc Martin sandals. Those ones I wear, I guess, cause they're like stylish as well, but it's mainly just that during the summertime I need to wear sandals and those are some cute sandals, but I still don't love showing my toes, but I'm wearing them specifically cause it's hot outside. So I won't be wearing socks so maybe as like a winter trend or like a spring trend but still i just wouldn't wear my sandals every year i feel there is a different type of suit trend and apparently on some of the fashion website trends lists for 2024 
short suits are going specifically like suits but instead of it being trousers it's shorts and I'm kind of not sure with this one I almost don't have an opinion about it I have some shorts that are in a suit style and I could wear it with like a black blazer that I have but I've never even thought of pairing that together. It almost has just like never crossed my mind. So maybe I'll try it because I like, I it, I already have those pieces. So I may just try it and see. Maybe if it was like a pattern, like a pattern plaid suit shorts set or whatever, like that could be kind of fun, especially in spring. Kind of leaning towards liking this one, but I don't know if I'll actively try to find like more suits, shorts, sets. I already talked about metallics in my 2023 trends video where I like ranked and roast different trends, but I saw gold metallic. I feel like silver metallic really had a moment in the past like two years and apparently it's going to shift in 2024 to gold and you would think that I would be more open to that because I wear specifically gold jewelry, but gold metallic clothing just kind of like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I almost hate it more than silver metallic like clothing. I have some silver metallic shoes that I really like and imagining them being gold just does not feel right. Like the silver was already a, a lot for me, but the gold just takes it into almost like feeling very cheap. Why is it that gold metallic feels more cheap than like a silver metallic? I don't know. I wanted to mention Pantone's color of the year because I'm sure we will see this being used for clothing pieces and that is peach fuzz. And you know, I don't know how I feel about peach. I don't think it's a color. I don't think I own anything peach. I don't think I like peach. The color peach I like, but wearing peach I don't like. So for me, I am anti-hauling the color peach in clothing, for me personally. <laughs> also in my video going through 2023 trends, I talked about the floral choker trend and I guess like the 3D florals trend, but I still wanted to mention it here specifically being called garden core. Oh, a fa I think it was Vogue or one of them that called it garden core. And I think the difference with this one is it's a lot more of the 3D flowers and a bunch of different ways, whether it's like a headband or a hat, just the like more intense 3D flowers. And especially the Sandy Lane, like um, she has these tops that have 3D florals on them. And I actually really, really like it. Like her designs with the 3D flowers I really, really love. And it's very interesting to me. Like, I feel like that rendition is a lot more interesting than some of the other ones, but both of which I wouldn't wear. So I'm gonna say it's a no for me. I saw that A-line like structured pieces are going to be a trend for 2024. And actually Lainey Ozark had talked about it in her like predicting 2024 fashion trends. And I really like A-line dresses. I feel like they have such a fun, I mean, it's, it's just an up and down silhouette, but there's something amazing about it. I feel like I don't find it that often at the thrift store, but I also don't really have it on my mind very often. So going into 2024, an A-line dress or like silhouette is definitely on my thrift wish list. Okay, I think this one's more a 2024 fashion trend for myself, but I, I also have seen some other people wearing it recently, which are fur coats. I mean, fur coats, they're kind of a classic for most people, especially if you live somewhere cold. I have talked smack on fur coats. I think it was literally either this year or it was last year where I think I had said, I don't like fur coats. And it wasn't until recently that my friend Caroline had worn one that I don't know what it did, but there was something that unlocked inside of me. And I was like, I have to find this secondhand. And I did recently thrift a, it's technically faux fur, but it's actually probably one of the best faux fur jackets I've ever felt. And it was mainly the silhouette that really got me and the color. But anyway, I think last winter it was more of the like moto style jacket or even the leather bomber jacket that was really big. And now I feel the fur jacket is going to be really big for this winter. I don't know if this one will be like a 
trend for other people, but it is a trend in style that I really, really, really would love to find for 2024. And that is baggy loose denim, but specifically on the foot. Like I'm gonna show you examples cause I don't think I can explain it, but I have just found that so many pairs of jeans, even jeans that say that they're like loose and like are wide leg, they end up bunching around the ankle to where they don't like nicely go over the shoe that you're wearing. I want a loose jean that goes over my shoes. So, so bad. And I don't understand why this is so hard to find. And I feel like it's a really hard one to find secondhand because I would have to try it on to really know if the jean will go over my shoe, how I want it to go over my shoe. But I don't know, that's on my thrift wish list, so I just wanted to mention it. Maybe I should have titled this video thrift wish list. No, because there's some things on here that I that I said that I don't want and I don't like. Um, but this one, I don't know if it's a trend for other people. I had seen it on Lainey's Pinterest when I was thrifting for her. Basically, my thriftmas videos were just a big inspiration of fashion that I like maybe had never even thought of and sweaters with collars. I mean, I did thrift some sweaters with collars, like holiday sweaters recently. And so maybe it's from that, but then also seeing like plain sweaters with a collar, like I love that style. This is 100% on the top of my thrift. Well, there were some other ones that I said that were on the top of my thrift wish list. So this is also close to the top on my thrift wish list. I feel like this year we really saw pleated maxi plaid skirts becoming quite, I mean, every fall it seems like pleated maxi plaid skirts become a trend. Is that is that an accurate thing? I feel like just especially this year, I saw so many people, specifically like the vintage style ones, getting into them and even myself as well. Maybe it's also because I haven't like really found any at the thrift store until recently. I do think going into 2024 and maybe especially fall 2024, a solid gray pleated maxi skirt is gonna be big. Not that it's not big right now. I just haven't seen a lot of people wear it. And with, again, Sandy Lane being just like such a big designer that people love, especially this past year, I feel like so many more people have been talking about their designs, which I love their design. So like, I'm also team Sandy Lane, but they have a gray pleated maxi skirt. And I just feel like the people that know have been wearing it, but I definitely see it kind of becoming more of a trend next year, especially during fall time versus kind of the normal like plaid that we usually see. Personally, I don't necessarily like love a gray pleated maxi skirt. Like I'd rather just have a plaid one. I'm just not a gray person. I don't love the color gray. I don't hate the color gray. I don't know. I just don't really see it going with anything that I own. It's just kind of meh for me personally. Alrighty, thank you all so much for watching. I am just so excited for fashion for 2024. I don't know, the past like two months, I feel like fashion and style wise, I haven't really been diving into i i think it's because it still hasn't at least at this point been that cold where i live and so i've been feeling pretty much like uninspired because the things i want to wear i can't wear because it's still too hot now at least in the next week it's going to start getting actually chilly and i think consistently chilly and so that's going to bleed into then it being 2024 so i feel like that's why i'm more looking at like 2024 fashion and feeling more inspired about 2024 fashion i just am excited for the weather to get chillier because i really i really want to wear my faux fur coat that i thrifted it's so bad let me know in the comments any styles or trends that you're really into right now again it doesn't have to be like trending on like fashion websites or what other people are saying is trendy like what is trendy for you in your life? Let me know. If you would like to see my face again, then make sure to subscribe right down below and hit the little bell to be notified every time I make a new video. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram, which is alexandshine83. I'll see you in my next video and I hope you have a super sunny day. Bye.